so welcome everyone uh, so this is the last talk uh, of the day and the talk is uh, around the tooling system and the bundlers that are available in the market and can, what can be a sensible default choice uh, for for such bundlers so before like a big uh, quick uh, round of introduction for myself uh, i am vishal sharma so i have been in the it industry for more than 9 years and right now working as a lead con in uh, thoughtworks so over to you shashwat yeah hi all i hope i'm audible uh, i'm shashwat i have been in uh, the industry for more than 6 years now i am a senior consultant right now in thoughtworks so yeah good to have you around so before actually jumping to the main topic Uh, we actually have to figure out uh, why do we even need something called as a bundler and to understand that uh, we have to actually go to the roots of javascript that which says how does the actual module system progress in the java ecosystem javascript ecosystem sorry uh, that means uh, like if you if you remember if you go 10 12 years back correct when when we do not have such rich frameworks in the market so we used to have a very simple script tag in the html and say javascript was only used for some sort of interactions click of a button i want to do this no not not heavy javascript applications correct uh, so we will see uh, from that point onwards till now how the module system has actually been evolved to start with the first one we could see uh, we we all know about this thing correct uh, we had inline scripts or script tags <laughs> where we have to even if we are dividing that whole code into multiple files or i would say multiple js files we have to include those files in the script tag in your html code so looking at this particular code we'll use utilize the same code to give examples for all the different module systems but looking at this code you have a simple constant uh, pi which is declared in constants.js and a get area function in the circle.js which is actually utilizing that pi but if you see that pi is now exposed on grindo so anyone who can tell me what are the problems uh, in this particular way of mod or of writing different files or different modules in javascript what can be the problems you can actually face if you write uh, your code in this way what is your functions and your uh, variables are all in the global scope polluting the global namespace correct that is one of course that can be a little time consuming because all the script tags is always uh, code blocking so till the time you want to even load the first script the next one will not be uh, like loaded there are ways to like solve that problem also but yes this is not a appropriate solution other problem the part is the order of declaring if you declare the circle first and constant second it will start breaking correct but it will so not that, be the desired output yeah correct so that means so if you see the script tags in the head tag you will see that constant dot js is declared before circle dot js correct if you actually uh, swap it uh, it will start breaking because it is what it is doing actually just fetching that code from that file and putting it here so if your pi is not declared anywhere your get area function will not be able to figure out what the pi is so it will break so you have to continuously check for the sequence of script tags also so to solve some of these problems the next system came in was ifi so i hope you would all have seen that immediately invoke function expression this is a very very fast way like old way of doing writing javascript so what we used to do was like we actually declare a global function or global object let's say my app or you can name space it anyhow and your constant your dot js instead of having pi on window you say that my con my function or my variables are tied to that global object but you wrap it inside a immediately invoked function so constant dot js the function is immediately invoked but since the whole javascript eco work ecosystem works with uh, functional scoping with variables and all now it has moved to lexical with that and all but you will see that uh, pi is not globally exposed so how do you use it in the other uh, other uh, class or other javascript file since you have added to the my app dot uh, my app global variable then you can directly use it as my app dot pi into radius dot radius for get area 
and one of the other the advantage of this way was that you can decide what you want to expose at the global context like global context or global uh, scope so here if you see the circle dot ts get area is exposed on my app which is again on window but get circumstance is not so that means i can decide what i want to expose to the other models again what can be the problems so it gives you it gives us a way to encapsulate the code but still my app is still on the global context correct so your naming collision can still happen any other drawback that anyone can think of uh, this pattern so one of the thing i was reading when i was uh, i was just adding this example that when if he came into the 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 solution that the javascript developer used to use semicolons a lot then because the code was too tightly written within a function that they have to figure out that where to write semicolons uh, even so with this particular solution you, you solved one problem but again my app is still on global scope correct so any let's say the javascript and if you are embedding javascript for any other application so if even if that has a my app as a global context it will override yours so things will stop working so after seeing such issues uh node js came into market correct around 2008 and 9 and they came up with their own module system called common js so they gave a way uh, where you can actually export your modules and even import your modules using module.export and of course via require this require is of course not required you as well as require so and and one good one other thing they started was they actually came up with an npm module system node package manager you where you can write your code and expose to package managers like node to be utilized in any other application also so again it gives you a way to encapsulate your code within a single module and you can define again what you want to expose even if you see circle.js again only cat area is exported from that file that means whosoever wants to consume can only actually require a uh, get area but not get circumference so you can always since javascript never had the concept of private and public now they have come up with so that means these these functions or these vari variables always remain the private scope but even with this correct uh, this was more for for the node ecosystem they never developed it for browsers so even if you have this require statement in the browser the since browser being single threaded correct so if they have to require other module they will get into a like again javascript thread will block till the time it hasn't actually require all the javascript so that is the bigger disadvantage of it so that means you have to somehow reach to a way where all the modules have clumped together into a single index or a bundle file other problem uh, with this was again since this was not standardized uh, it was again opinionated and a different uh, i i would say different uh, people came up with different kind of solutions of it also and to solve that synchronous wala problem which i talked about that it can become a code blocking issue there is some other pattern came into the market called amd asynchronous uh, module definitions uh with this what it happens is you can you can actually define what you want to uh load as a module uh in your file and your 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 library or whosoever is implementing a mp will only load that for example in constant.js you are just returning pi from here correct and in circle.js you are saying that go for this particular module or circle to work i need to i need constants which is defined here and i and i'll define it there and utilize via constants.py so it it again encapsulates um, and nothing is on global uh, and tries to solve a lot of problems correct uh, require js here was the first one to implement this so that more require const was is not the require js one this is one of the example of require js but with this also again uh, i i i i think after 2005 or some sometime around that almost around 8 10 years javascript acma 6 before coming uh, there was hardly any new development in the javascript ecosystem 
and that is when suddenly to i think 2015 uh, es5 or es6 came into picture and that is when the whole module system gets standardized uh, so javascript came up with their own esm uh, synchron uh, es modules which supports the synchronous plus or synchronous loading of modules so you might have used something called lazy loading of modules creating a different chunks and all so all of these were supported with ecma 6 uh, but again uh, now the next set of problems right correct we have standardizations of modules in javascript world now but since all the different browsers uh, like supports different kind of engines correct uh, you might have heard that chrome is on v8 correct similarly i think ie was on chakra later on so they the these browsers takes their own time to implement new features so even if in 2015 es6 came up with the whole a lot of features they were not readily available for those browsers to get to use it directly correct so that means you have to somehow convert those new features to the old way of writing javascript for the browsers to understand that and even know so like this is one this was one of the feature import export what were the other features that came up with as6 you you will be using it in your day to day life anyone arrow function perfect let where const correct even now i think few years back only the browsers have started supporting let before that they were not able to uh async await i think that came up with es7 regular expressions uh, generators so that means even though these uh these functionalities or features were available our browsers were not able to utilize it directly and that is where the idea of a bundler one of the idea of a bundler came where it says that okay now you have different modules you are writing your files you are writing your javascript files or typescript files you are write, adding your css you are writing your sas or you are adding your more different type of static assets like images and all what a bundler will do it it will give you it will just combine everything <coughs> according to their extension the type of file and give you a distribution of your file type like every javascript code will be compiled to a js all the css can be uh, given back to you as a single dot css file and that is why you actually needed uh, a bundler we are instead of relying on a browser es modules because again browsers was not supporting bundler says okay you utilize new features i'll make sure that i'll give you a one single bundle dot js again you can split it we'll talk about that later i'll give you one single file which supports which has already converted the new features to the older feature so that you can directly import that or directly use it to javascript files into your pack tag or script tag and that is why you actually need a bundler but uh, uh, again like bundler out of the box does not gives you a capability to actually convert a newer features to the older features correct bundler's main responsibility is to combine whole of your javascript into a single file or multiple chunks and that is where the idea of a transpiler comes into picture so what transpiler do i i hope you all are aware of a babel <coughs> again babel is not a bundler okay so you need babel with your bundler solution to actually convert your newer code to the newer features to the older features and that is that what does that mean is that bundlers plus transpilers actually give you a compatible code with all the browsers now the newer versions of the browsers are actually supporting the new features but if you have a requirement where you again have to support the older versions without this the code will not work so we'll we'll go through the demos also where you will see that how babel is utilized in webpack and all so that set up the context correct so this is why we need bundlers why we need transpilers but we have so many options in the market if you see this is a very very small list of bundlers available you have webpack webpack i think most of you will already be aware of parcel es build grunt gulp and so on like it will never end this is a very very small list so what we thought is that what we thought is uh, why not actually 
again, you are seeing this image in almost all the talks here. Why not actually go to the state of JavaScript and figure out uh, what are the best or what are the, I would say, comparing different uh, aspects of a build tool, which can be retention, uh, your interest, your usage, and what is the last one? Uh, awareness so if you see if i'm clicking over it it is changing correct so that means retention wise in 2016 webpack was the most uh, utilized or if uh, i don't know what's about for retention why use but it is slowly going down now in 2021 webpack is is lower than many other tools and there is an emergence of different type of uh, build tools and webpack is taking or oh, sorry weed is taking a lot of attention here similarly on the interest side if you see <coughs> webpack is not only not a default option for you and, and so on usage wise if you see even though retention and awareness has decreased or oh, sorry in retention and interest has decreased but even then utilization or usage is still that far for webpack compared to any other tool and so on and awareness of course so after comparing these tools after looking at this state of javascript in 2021 we thought we'll find out the four uh, best suited tools uh, according to these ratings and we'll try to compare what is their state and what will be the parameters of evaluation for us will be speed of bundling. That means uh, when you're running NPM run build, correct? How much time a particular tool is taking to generate a build on, uh, on our code base. We'll demo the code base also after that. And serving also. Webpack comes up with something called a Webpack dev server, correct? You say NPM run start and it just spin up a dev server for you. How much time does it take to spin that up? Are there tools who does that faster than Webpack or maybe slower than Webpack also? Then size of, what does that mean? That given without any uh, vendor library like React, React or Angular or anything, if you just have to set up a build tool in your project, what are the diff or basic setup, right? What are the different packages you would need uh, in your system? And what is the size of those node modules? Third one is, what are the features available? We talked about features available in the browsers and bundlers, but what are the features available in the browsers? Are they giving you a capability to run HMR, port module replacement? Are they giving you a capability to have a dev server or minification or and so on? And how easy to configure that also? Again, developer experience. We talked about developer experience in the previous talk. That is one of the most important aspect for us being developers, correct? And the last one is, of course, community support. Uh, given a issue that you come across, uh, how easy is for you to find out a solution for that? Uh, maybe it can be one of the evaluation of that can be how how much are the GitHub stars for that uh, that bundler or that package? You usually compare those two, correct? So, so these four will be our evaluation criteria. And before actually jumping to compare the tools, we would like to give you a walkthrough of a very, very simple application that we have built to actually run the bundlers on. And for that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Shashwat for the next set of uh, stuff. Uh, over to you, Shashwat, you can share your screen. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, hi, all. Let me know if my screen is visible. I hope it is. Thank you. Yeah, we can see. Okay, perfect. So uh, before we get started with the application structure, just a few things to get out of the way. So uh, for a few things, we'll be running a few commands here. Uh, it would be best to know what each of those commands mean because uh, we'll be evaluating the bundles for each of them. So uh, we I have alias two of the commands here. Uh, so NPS is npm run start. What it will basically do is start the dev server for you. Right? Uh, we have npm run build, uh, which will again give us the build final output which would primarily be the command that we would be using for our final prod uh, output. Right? Uh, there's one more command that I will be using to uh, 
to uh, let's say uh, get the size of a directory uh, which is du hyphen sh right so yeah uh, uh, just wanted to get this out of the way because we'll be using this uh, very frequently to evaluate all of the uh, options that we have right now on to the app that we have built for that uh, sorry sir uh, can you yeah. just increase the font for a bit on terminal okay yeah uh, let me is this better yeah thank you yeah uh, and is uh, intellij better like is it visible yeah uh, a bit increase in font size would help Is this better? Uh, better than before. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So we'll get just get started. Uh, with the app that we have built, we have a very uh, small mock server that we have created for the app. Uh, it just uh, handles and uh, shows us the uh, uh, gives us a very basic JSON which we render. Uh, and we have a React based app. Uh, that we have created. Uh, this app uh, in itself. Uh. is a very simple app we'll have a look at the ui also but it has a set of components uh, and uh, again an api called it actually makes to the mock server also we have uh, some assets that we have added uh, for the app and uh, that asset also gets bundled uh, one of the criteria that we wanted to show was the assets getting but uh, yeah that's mostly it in terms of how deep we will go into that if if need be we will go down deeper but for now we we'll just have a look at the running app okay so a uh, uh, one more aspect that i wanted to cover was the uh, the way that we have shaped our uh, directory structure right so for so we have placed the app and server uh, in our individual directories but for each of the build tools we have kept created separate directories right so that helps us in just you know uh, separating out each of the build tools and we'll sir we you say i come only right now okay are you able to see the ls lrt output yes yeah 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 So yeah, so so for each of these, we have specific uh, directories that we have created, and uh, first we'll start off with web. Yeah, any questions? Any uh, things from that side, Vishal? We'll continue. Yeah, are we good uh, with us? Yeah, yes. cool. Yeah, perfect. So we start with uh, web. So first, let's just uh, analyze the node module size. Uh, so at least in this case for web. Uh, the node modules that we see is up to 103 MB. Uh, let's quickly first have a look at the uh, package JSON script for Webpack and what are the things that we have actually added. Right? Again, our app is at least we assume that it is uh, you know quite a bare bones app, but some of the plugins that we need uh, needed for the bundling to uh, take place uh, is the one that we have added, and that is the one that Webpack does need uh, out of the box. Right? Uh, we'll quickly have a look at. uh the dev configuration mostly a uh, webpack relies on a lot of plugins webpack in itself was like one of the uh, uh grandfather of all of the bundlers and the plugin ecosystem that it has is quite massive we have a whole lot of files and hardly any file format that might not be supported some of them are even incorrectly supported uh but the idea again being that it is very plugin driven and gives a whole lot of control to the user uh it allows us chunking and uh, you know uh minifying our application which we have Uh, added in our prod config that we have created uh it does not allow jsx uh, or, or um, the other file uh, resolution out of the box but like i said we have uh, the plugin support for most of the features that are there, right let's quickly run the application from webpack so like i said we will first start the application uh this will start the dev server right and uh, okay so first thing is in terms of the time that it took uh that is the reason that we are running this live on terminal so at least uh, the audience will also know the feel of uh, of when we are running a, a web app application right so it took around 2 seconds to run and to compile fully let's have a look at the uh, what so so yeah so the uh, the image that we talked of has been bundled and uh, we can see like you know whatever uh, Uh, options that we are choosing in terms of the macbook configuration the amount in the bottom tab would would be reflected according yeah okay uh so yeah in terms of the speed it is uh, decent uh, it is not the fastest out there let's quickly uh, bundle the application also uh, to gain an idea of how fast might the 
broad bundle take to build, right? Right. So again, around uh, 3.5 second because of the tersor that we had added to minify uh, everything, right? It uh, it basically has a bit of code splitting that we can add, plugin supported for that, and support for SVG, PNG, all kind of image assets also, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, so that's mostly it about Webpack, but a couple of points about Webpack, right? Um, let me go back to my slides. Uh, so yeah, uh, so 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 in terms of uh, any bundler options that we start off with, we primarily want to start off with Webpack uh, because like we said, it is the grandfather of all of the bundlers out there, right? A lot of ideas were initially implemented on Webpack. Uh, the, the concept of hot module replacement and even the initial idea of having a dev server were initially, you know, uh, conceptualized on Webpack. Uh, during the time that React and other SPAs were evolving was also how Webpack evolved and, you know, constantly uh, added support for more and more features. And that is why it has such a huge plugin ecosystem. There's hardly any bundler that comes close to Webpack in terms of the plugins and the community support. So the reason we wanted to lay this foundation is, okay, now that we have Webpack out of the way, we can actually have a look at the other tools and kind of use Webpack as our yardstick. Right? We, will, we will evaluate how the other tools are behaving and we'll kind of have Webpack because it is kind of the de facto, like the uh, graph that Vishal was showing, it is still the most used bundler out there. Right? So yeah, any parting thoughts on Webpack, any questions, any um, uh, you know project experiences that you might have had around Webpack from audience, any uh, fair? No? I, I hope most of you will be using Webpack right now. Or at least would have heard of it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's a defect of right? I, uh, <laughs> right. So create React app, I think by default uses setup. Right. right. Angular uh, CLI by default uses Webpack. So, but they are moving towards other tools now. Right. In the right. future, I think they would definitely. But any good or bad experience with Webpack till now? What do you don't like about Webpack? <laughs> I think the audience love Webpack. <laughs> we, can we can stop our job. <laughs> we should be very careful with the next options. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, as uh, Vishal covered earlier, right, uh, there was an evolution that was happening in terms of the modules, right? Uh, the, the standardization of modules, uh, the the coming in of common JS and Node.js and all of the mixing and matching from backend and frontend frameworks. Similarly, uh, there was a rise and an idea of how ES modules can be supported in the browser by default. Right? So, so if ES modules are supported by default, then uh, our code would get a whole lot easier in the sense that some of the code that we are writing might not need the whole the level of transpilation that it needs. Uh, and the initial support for uh, ES modules in browser was actually quite slow uh, when uh, the specification was implemented. But with time, uh, browsers caught on. And now there is almost across all browsers, uh, native support for ESL, right? The first part of the sentence, uh, which also gave rise to, okay, can we implement bundlers in ESL, right? Which is what we have here, right? So we'll just uh, quickly look uh, at the difference between the two approaches, right? So the one on the left is the Webpack approach, right? And the one on the right, is an uh, ESM based approach, assuming that there is native ESM support in the browser. Right? So, so on the left, if you see uh, the way uh, the code gets bundled is, uh, let's say the JavaScript, a very basic uh, Webpack uh, code uh, would actually crawl through all of your dependencies and then we'll create one bundle out of that. And that is when my server gets ready, right? So the NPS command that I had run initially for, uh, for Webpack is actually doing that. Yeah, it is fast, but it's actually doing all of that. Right? Uh, and then we finally get a bundle and that is when the server is ready. Some of the folks thought, okay, let my server fire up early. My browser will tell me the, the JavaScript that it needs. And then I will send those JavaScripts on the fly. Right. Reason I am able to do this because the support for import a from B that we shall had shown, right. That comes natively in browser. Now. So the idea was, okay, why do the bundlers need to do all of these heavy lifting? Let the browser do a bit of work for me. And I will optimize the part after the entry. Right? So let's say the server ready and entry. And then I see, okay, I have a few imports. I will crawl lesser number of JavaScript files. Right? And if I don't need the few other JavaScript files that when, well, I don't need to send those across. Right. So that at least conceptually means that it is fast. Right? 
is it faster <laughs> we'll see uh, so yeah so now we move to the roll up uh, the reason again that we picked up roll up as our second option was because it was the first uh, bundler that thought of the esm first approach that okay i will be having my es modules as my uh, you know uh, default way of uh, of bundling things up we'll be having the look at the uh, at the code really shortly couple of things regarding roll up was that uh, because we had built our webpack app first and i assume that will be the case for a lot of use cases where we'll be covering the bundles and we we'll want to migrate from webpack to the other bundles in case of roll up uh, it was hard at least for us for both me and we shall be we found it really hard to migrate from webpack to roll up uh in terms of the plugin support that was again uh, none of the plugins that will be covering uh, even later the plugin support comes close to webpack but in case of rollup we found it especially lacking right uh but the but uh, rollup was and still is a very important player uh, some of the major uh, uh esm first uh, innovations happened in rollup and uh, micro bundle uh, one of the pa leading package managers for having you know uh, libraries is also based out of rollup beat is also based out of rollup Okay, now let's quickly have a look at the code for Rollup. So, okay, I will just be clearing my terminal. Okay, so we are in Rollup territory now. Okay. Let me first uh, start the dev server. Now, again, this is something similar to what we had seen earlier, right? Uh, we are starting the dev server. Uh, yeah. So, as you can see, it also starts up. Uh, we had assumed that it would be faster than webpack <laughs> believe us uh, that is that was our assumption but that is not how it happened right uh, so it's uh, so what we found was it was actually slower than uh, webpack in terms of orders of magnitude slower right uh, let's quickly get the dev build uh, the final prod build also out of the way and see how fast uh, that takes um so yeah Again, 5.8 seconds. So for, for those who have been keeping a tab, uh, it is predictably slower than Webpack, right? Uh, which is not what we expected when we covered the ESM slide. Right? Uh, let's also quickly have a look at our uh, uh, our package JSON that uh, Rollup has generated. Uh, sorry, the, the node modules directory that Rollup has generated, 64 MB, much lesser than what Webpack has. And quickly have a look at the package JSON entry for Rollup. Yeah. So, Uh, again, a set of dependencies that we do need, uh, less than Webpack, of course. Our config for dev, uh, it took us a while to migrate from Webpack, to be very honest, uh, and for prod. Right? Uh, again, a lot of systems, uh, a lot of functionalities are based out of plugins, and uh, it has a very rich uh, plugin API, but uh, not enough support for plugins, at least the ones that we found. Right? Okay. I think uh, that is it about roll up. Any parting thoughts, anything from your side, Vishal, or any of the other folks across the other centers? So one of the biggest uh, problem that when we were actually building this, so what we faced was, uh, so Webpack has something called uh, HTML Webpack plugin. So what it does it that when you are saying npm run build, so the index.html that you have declared, it just pick it up embed the script tags or whatever chunks you have created and copy it back to the distribution folder, which you actually deploy it to your servers, like wherever you want to, however you want to run the application. So I like, we were trying to build multiple chunks out of it, uh, like at least the index and the vendor chunk. Vendor is just for the libraries. And we wanted that vendor chunk to also get embedded into the script tag in the index.exe, which we could not. That's a very basic function. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. even after trying multiple times, I think we could not achieve that. Maybe we are missing on something, but uh, after searching a lot for that also, I think that was not uh, implemented in this example. Yeah. Another thing is uh, one of the basic difference between when we are saying that NPM runs start or NPS that is uh, allies that is using and NPM run build is that build in addition to whatever commands or whatever configuration we have in the dev build is also minifying the code with cursor or whatever the bundler support. Plus it is also exposing source maps so that you can debug it later on in the different environments also. So that is why you will see that build is always taking a little bit more time than the serve because it is doing more operations. 
So that is the same pattern we have tried to use in the different bundles. Yeah, cool. Over to you, Shashwat. Any any questions on roll up or any experience with roll up? Gurgaon, Bangalore, anyone? Uh, one question from the chat: How are you switching between Webpack and Rollup while building? Do you want to take that? If no questions, so I guess uh, we are not switching. It's just two different directories where we are saying that yeah. <laughs> uh, our starting point is on the same application. Maybe uh, Shashwat, you can show that code. Uh, maybe VS Code quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, let's say in case of. Uh, a rule up. Uh, it is as simple as this. We are saying that you know, pick up my uh, input from index.js, uh, and we have kept our app in uh, and index.js uh, file here. And for each of my different bundles, I'm just pointing it to the JS file, uh, the base JS, file. and that's it. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the magic line eleven. Something that we had thought initially, we thought, okay, why not go with the simplest approach? Hope no other questions. One question. One minute. So, uh, when you were uh, describing about the rollup, uh, you told once the server, it's like server ready architecture, means once user clicks on something based on the route, the JS will be bundled as such, right? So, right. Uh, it didn't happen that way, right? Everything bundled together. Right. Um, okay. Now uh, that is a good point. That is actually a good question. Uh, so one of the things that uh, we have seen with ESM based bundles, right, uh, is something uh, that we will come up to again. It is the difference between uh, DX and what actually gets rendered in the end, right? When we talk about ESM based first approach, the dev server that we are seeing is actually just in dev. Okay. Uh, because if this were the way, like if I would be shipping out something like a ESM first approach to my prod. Each of this would actually require a lot of network calls. Right, right now, uh, when I finally get my prod bundle and ship it out, what I'm shipping out is maybe a chunk, uh, let's say some bundles, right? Two or three JavaScript files, and each of them have their imports and everything organized in them. Right? It is not very easy to implement ESM on live environment with the network and the infra setup that we have right now. Right. Uh, the idea behind ESM first dev servers is primarily ar around DX. Right. Once I start my npm start, uh, and the dev server starts in my dev environment, and then that is where my native ES modules come into picture. You'll see it in Veet also later. Uh, how these two approaches actually vary. So Veet has a separate idea of bundling for prod and you know uh, something running on dev. But uh, at least uh, native ESM support uh, right now, uh, we do not ship it out natively to prod unless we have done some optimizations, right? Uh, so, uh, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we'll quickly move ahead. Ah. Uh, so the second. Uh, uh, player comes in the game now, right? Uh, so, so what were happening was initially when a lot of these uh, JS bundles were developed in silos, in terms of that JavaScript was the language of tooling for my JavaScript project, right? Uh, e even now, a lot of the projects uh, that we have, uh, a lot of the tooling that we have is around JavaScript. Some of the disruptors came uh, and you know uh, changed that market slightly. Uh, the advantage was that once you got the, you know, the speed with which, let's say, a lot of other languages operated, uh, Golang, Rust, and all of those languages, and those tooling started coming in, then we started to actually see that, you know, uh, having the support for concurrency or multi-threading actually speeds up a lot of things that maybe your JavaScript or TypeScript based tools might not be able to do out of the box, right? So yeah, so our first tool in that category is ES build. Uh, again, this is picked up from the ES build site. As you can see, uh, the bund uh, the time that it took to bundle versus all of the others, right? I mean, there's even no comparison in terms of the speed. Right? Uh, ES build was developed by uh, even Wallace, a uh, lot of projects under his belt uh, in Golang, and it has an opinionated way that it has uh, gone about in terms of its development, even in terms of its plugin support. It has a very rich plugin API, um, but it uses Golang, so yeah, it is extremely fast uh, for that. 
lot of things by the time ES build came into the picture, a lot of things support were available out of the box, TypeScript, PSX, JSX. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, it is extremely fast. So let's quickly have a look at uh, at uh, ES build. Yeah. So again, I will clear up my terminal. So first, let's have a look at the node modules. Right, eight MB. This is uh, very very thin. Uh, there are almost no JavaScript dependencies, or very less uh, in terms of you know the uh, number of libraries that you need to get your uh, app up and running. Let's quickly start our server. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so, so in case of ES build, we are just uh, bundling. Uh, we are just using ES build for bundling at this point because the support for a dev server has not been added yet. I don't think it will be added any anytime soon. But uh, let's just have a look at the bundle. Right. That's it. I'll run it once more because I might have the time for that. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Uh, so, 51 milliseconds is all it took. Uh, everything. Uh, all of the bundling uh, done. Right. Uh, let's have a look at some of the configurations. I'll close other directories and expand ES build. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, not a whole lot of things here. Right? Uh, and similarly, in case of configurations, one of the things that we had been, again, amazed by the speed, but also more and more modern tools have lesser and lesser length of the config file that you will see. You need lesser amount of configurations because a lot of the things have been standardized and have been added as a support out of the box. Things for which you would be needing plugin in Webpack might not be the case anymore for a lot of the modern tools, right? And again, um, we did the same thing again. We just uh, used the uh, index.js directory from our app uh, to you know to get ES build to run. Um, so yeah, that is it about ES build. Any uh, more things to add, Vishal? Any questions? Anything from the other uh, centers, folks? So many guests out there. Yeah, one of the major thing I think uh, we we missed here, Shashwat, is that yeah. when we say it is uh, non JS based tooling, so right. ES build is actually written in GoLang. Right. And right. the reason why it is so fast is that uh, GoLang has a capability or a feature to add Go routines where you can parallelize right. the work. We, I'm yeah. not expert in GoLang, yes. but this is how it actually doing the whole lot, lot of things in just milliseconds. So right. that means JavaScript being single threaded has its own issues also. Right. And the, the community says, okay, we want to have faster builds. Now look at the advantages of it also. So let's say you want to build an application where you don't want any downtime. Down, down and right now you have, you want to take a new feature to your production environment, correct? Right. If, right. if your NPM run build is taking minutes or a lot of seconds you are actually spending a lot of time there so tools like this if they are doing the same thing in milliseconds why not to use them correct right so that that's what we are saying and regarding the dev server i think uh, there is no idea of even adding dev server in this right. right that is not what they want to do mm. there's a very really opinionated way that they are moving about in terms of you know how yes build will look in the future and uh, <laughs> dev server is not in their scope right now Correct. And maybe one more thing again. Uh, so if you see the configuration of these new tools also, so compared to Rollup and Webpack, you would see that you have to add some plugins or loaders to get the things work, correct? So the new tooling is saying that, okay, we know every application need to do that. So as a yeah. developer, I'll enhance your experience. I'll give you the, all those things out of the box. So if right. you see the configuration, you're just writing one line, which says minify true. Hmm. It's a web pack. You just need to say, you actually need to uh, download a plugin, cursor plugin and embed it. And even search for it, how to do it. Cool. Here you don't need to do anything, correct? It's that easy to build and as, as fast to build the production builds also. In a way, they've considered them as sensible defaults as well. Right. <laughs> Not, not really. They, they are more. They are other better options also. We talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's one question, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. No, they. I think they don't have that compatibility. So the idea of ES build, what we were reading was that for for anything that you want to do on a developer machine, correct? You can use any other tool. But if you want to build npm run build or build your distribution folder. This is as fast as you can use. 
and there are tools who actually utilize ES build. We'll talk about that in the next section, which uses ES build internally and have a dev server compatibility also. Right. Okay, shall we move ahead? No more questions, I hope. Just, just one second now. Okay, just, yeah. More Correct. Yeah, that means you you are actually reaching your production environment much faster than other like older tools now. Vishal, for the interest of everyone, can you also repeat the question? We are not able to hear the question. Yeah, the, I think that more than a question, it was uh, uh, say that uh, if you are using CI CD, correct? So these right. tools actually help you to build faster and take your code hmm. to the production much faster. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, we can move ahead. Okay, so so now that we have both roll up and ES build out of the way, we come to week. Uh, this was created by even you, uh, the guy behind you. Uh, the idea here is pretty simple. That uh, roll up gives me a certain n number of things, which is ESM first approach, and in terms of uh, you know the dev server that we had covered, ES build gives me speed of bundling. Why not combine both? Right. So, so that is what uh, gave rise to the idea of Beat. Initially, uh, it was a part of the Vue CLI. Then it moved out of Vue CLI, but it still supported Vue. And then it moved out of Vue and moved to a system where it is actually now framework agnostic. There are a lot of open source frameworks that use Vue under the hood. Uh, and it is also uh, being supported by other developers. So if you go and look at the future plan of Rollup or the evolution of Rollup, it is very cl closely tied with how wheat will progress in the future. Right? Uh, it is incredibly fast. Uh, it has plugin ecosystem. It is not that evolved as we have for Webpack, but uh, there's a, there are a lot of plugins that we have uh, on wheat. And um, yeah, let's quickly have a look at uh, how wheat, uh, how the code looks. Right? So yeah, I'll clear this up again. 44 MB, not the least that we have seen, but not the most either. It comes with a set of uh, dependency that it wants to add. Let's quickly get start this. Yeah, and uh, that is what the hybrid approach does. Because of the combination of ES build and roller, it is incredibly fast. It is able to do a lot of things out of the box for us. Uh, we will have a look in the configuration. Let's quickly run the uh, prod build also. And yeah, again, uh, incredibly fast in terms of the final bundling. Right? Uh, it does a lot of chunking and heavy lifting under the hood. It has a bit of, again, an opinionated approach. So you won't find plugins that uh, you know do a whole lot of things. There are plugins which specialize in very small, small tasks. And even in terms of the API that it is exposed, it is very opinionated. As an example, your file that has a JSX in it does need a .jsx extension. Uh, if it does not, then uh, Wheat will break. Okay. Uh, let's quickly have a look at uh, the package JSON for Wheat. Right. Uh, again, not a whole lot of dependencies that we have here. Ah, so in terms of config, right? Uh, so both dev and prod, uh, that is mostly it, uh, what you need. Similar to what we had seen for ES build, we don't really need a whole lot of things uh, for Wheat. A lot of things are batteries included, and a lot of things, if you see, uh, we are actually uh, importing from V. And for some, we might need a plugin, but again, not to a whole lot of extent. Kind of goes back to the advantages that we have covered for Rollup and ES build, and brings the best of both worlds in a way, uh, uh, leading the open source future for a lot of the frameworks uh, Solid, Astro, you name it, most of the frameworks, uh, Storybook, most of them are using V under the hood. There was one more thing actually. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So so that is uh, mostly it about beat. Um, anything you want to add, Vishal, or any question, uh, folks? Uh, I have uh, one question. So I know it's a little too early, but have we been able to establish any opinion around uh, Turbo Pack? Right. Uh, we will come to that. We will come. To that. Yeah. It's not that we have not included it, <laughs> but we'll come to that. There's one question from Pune. Sorry. The final build size. Yeah, build size. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, Shashwat, uh, we can yeah. show the final file size of uh, 
the bundle created by wheat or rolla for it ha some of it is here uh, vishal can you see the zip uh, sizes for each of these so the vendor so the vendor is the one where we have all of our board module dependencies right? and the index js is the one where we uh, that will be shipping out uh, 1.74 kb uh, zip can can we see the same for roller uh, yeah. maybe we have to open the distribution folder yeah let me go i attend <laughs> to see the moment Yeah, it's still not G G zipped, I think. But even after G G zip, it should not be uh, uh, very less. Still be around eighty m eighty kb or something. Right. It would still be quite a lot. Yes. Yeah, that's an cool. awesome blog that is there on how wheat builds. Uh, so so for the node modules, it uses ES build to do it really fast. And for all of the uh, hot module replacements and anything on the dev side, uh, it uses rollup for the hot module re replacement and dev server. And there's a whole lot of optimization that had been added uh, in Vite uh, because of which it is able to achieve whatever it does. <laughs> so it depends again uh, when we talk in terms of sensible default, correct? Uh, so it's not that this tool is the best. it always depends on upon your use case correct what is the state of project you are in so sensible default says that oh given this particular instance or the state what can be a good fit for you so we here we are not saying that oh yes build is the best or wheat is the best we are saying that these are the advantages these tool gives you maybe whenever you are starting up a new project you have different options to explore now maybe don't go with webpack directly because you know that wheat might give you more better pictures or more better numbers now so you can always explore and try it out similarly with our experience again uh, the configuration that we use roll up uh, might not be a best fit right now because it is again a older tool but given all the advantages of roll up the other tools are using it to make them better like wheat correct wheat internally is using es build and roll up for its ecosystem so it's all depends like <laughs> the basic answer is depends what state are you in we will come to the uh, yeah, like the final layout first yeah yeah we use today uh, any clients in production any any project you are not audible huh? i think the question is do we no use wheat in any of the client projects was that right yeah that was it yeah we know of any that uses wheat today uh, on client projects not that i know of right now to be very frank in products india at least but uh, i have heard i think uh, somewhere outside india they are trying to use wheat with next year's projects or something like that but i'm not very sure about that okay so moving on yeah so we covered es build right that was written in golan uh why do i have a separate set of slides for rust uh so the reason for that is again rust uh, is uh, on a similar parallel to golang in terms of the modern languages that we have kind of the next level of system design languages that we have uh most of the modern uh, most of the bugs that we had earlier and the security uh, bugs that we had earlier were due to memory issues that were there in c++ and c uh which is uh, kind of removed in the way rust approaches memory it has the idea of a borrow checker it does not have a uh, garbage collector what all of these tech terms means is that uh, rest is a really powerful language and it is a very safe language you won't have uh, normally you know uh, unclaimed memory or any of the issues that we used to have with all the earlier language and the uh, api that it, it exposes is really clean what that has resulted in a set of 
different tools that use Rust under the hood. Right? So just like ESBuild was using Golang, let's have a look at SWC, uh, Speedy Web Compiler. Right? So again, it is a compiler. Uh, it is not a bundler, uh, as we will see. It was uh, in a very early stage. It was adopted by Next.js. Uh, it is again uh, really fast. We'll have a have a look at it. But um, I would again request folks to not uh, confuse it with uh, you know Webpack or uh, a bundler. This is closer to Babel. Uh, but uh, we just wanted to show that, okay, it does have support uh, and how Rust is, you know, pushing the boundaries of what a bundler or the entire idea of tooling itself. Right? Uh, uh, it has support for a lot of uh, uh, file types out of the box. It has a plugin API also, and it is very easily configured. Let's quickly have a look at that as well. Sorry. My bad. So we don't have the support for, uh, huh. so if you look at this output, this is the one where we are bundling things outside. Right? Uh, the output is basically of a, of, of a transpiler. Uh, right? It is taking my index.js file and uh, just uh, rendering it back into ES6 and then giving me the source map for that. But what we wanted to uh, show was basically one, the speed of it. Uh, we'll have just have a, small look at the code as well. Um, and also uh, in terms of uh, what SWC is doing in the transpiler space, right? Uh, open package JSON. Yeah, again, uh, not a whole lot of dependencies that it adds and a pretty uh, simple set of configurations that we have for this. Okay. So, in between a question, if I have to just yeah. type script, I should just be writing uh, TSX2. Is that as simple as that? Yeah. Yes. Most of the modern uh, uh, bundlers as well as uh, transpilers that we are seeing are moving to TypeScript as the first default. Uh, even a lot of uh, create star apps. Uh, tools are also moving to TypeScript by default. So with that structure in mind, most of the tools are also coming with TypeScript as default or supported out of the box. The sec second thing is that SWC is actually not a bundler. So they are moving yeah. towards that, uh, but they, it's still in beta, I would say, <laughs> they, are, they are trying to achieve that. Uh, it is more of a transpiler like Babel. But it says that since Babel was in JavaScript, correct? SWC, they build it in Rust and Rust again, as Shashwari told, is faster, right? So that means it is giving you a capability to convert the newer features to the older features much faster than Babel. Right. And they actually say that it is almost like 700 times faster than Webpack or something like that. Hmm. So we'll see that example also, but uh, yeah, that, that's and, all right. Uh, yeah, and just to add to that, the overall idea of tooling itself, right? What we have covered so far in terms of bundlers and transpilers, like the line between them is very thin. There are tools that might, we might see in the future, we do everything, you know, linting, uh, formatting, transpiling, bundling, everything. SWC also has a test runner called SWC Jest. It is also very, very fast. Uh, they say it is a drop in replacement for Jest. Uh, but yeah, it has some configurations, but uh, it acts as a test runner and again, uh, supports Rust and it is also incredibly fast for anyone wanting to try that. But yeah, the overall idea is around tooling uh, more than just the specific use cases with SWC. Okay, so yeah, so this is the statistics that we have uh, that we have covered for now. Uh, so uh, again, these are averaged out over the number of runs that we uh, uh, did. There was one thing more that we have done, uh, which is Webpack with SWC. So like you said, right, SWC is a transpiler. So we thought, okay, can we use it with uh, Webpack? So uh, so we had done that uh, here. Uh, and if you see, we had actually started using SWC here. Right? So this is again a drop in replacement for uh, the loaders that we have for JSX. Right? Uh, and this is the measure time with that. Again, uh, this really bumps up uh, Webpack's number. 
because uh, the one of the first slides that we saw, saw right uh, the time that we are seeing in the end is a combined uh, output of both the transpiler as well as the bundler so why not uh, fix one piece of that in terms of the speed right? and that is what we are seeing here yeah okay sorry yeah so that is one of the statistics about the project that we have demoed any questions regarding the app then we'll move on to the next slide where we are comparing all the options then there's one question here reliability when you say reliability of the app like just saying that uh, it doesn't Anshan, support can you please the question okay sorry so the question idea. so the question is that uh, uh, swc might not be supporting typescript according to last type checking sorry so does that mean that uh, in the trade off of speed we are losing the type checking when you say type checking can you just mention what what does that mean in terms of a tool correct so when speaking is barely audible here in gurgaon just just give us one second uh so uh, when we use typescript so we have an the typescript compiler actually check the types if we are using performing the correct operations on the type of the variable so in swc the last time i had checked it so they did not add the type checking option in swc they did not support that that, that would mean that it doesn't support typescript yeah so it supports typescript na no? it's a typescript bundle is it no? yeah I it does it, not give errors yeah that's right sometimes I, it does happen that just to support typescript out of the box they remove the type and compile it to a plain javascript but maybe that has changed in the latest versions of stops we had not checked the typescript uh, part yet one of the thing that i had tried in my previous project so if that is the case i would explore that part to be very fine uh, one of the thing we tried in our last project was that uh, we were using typescript with react native okay but the way react native works that you never actually need to set esc to compile the code so that means even if i was giving wrong types it was never checking for that yeah so one thing we did that was that uh, to make sure our types are correct we actually added that uh, uh, esc step in our linting and says that oh, ts our lint command is es lint and tsc but make sure in tsc configuration you are saying that output is nothing so don't create a distribution so that way you are actually making sure your types are also correct and your build is also faster so one way you can always try it. all good yeah okay then so yeah so this is uh, kind of going back to our theme right the sensible deeper so so this is kind of uh, a summary of whatever we have covered right most of this would be like you know self explanatory but uh, this is a time where we kind of look back at all of the options and try to make sense of okay what should i choose right the question that we started with um so yeah uh, maybe we'll start and uh, vishal can chip in uh, wherever you know uh, with each of the options so so we started with webpack right? uh again uh, in terms of the usage we saw that it is still one of the most uh, used bundlers out there right the plugin support and community support is too big we also saw an interesting variation where we started using swc as a as a as a transpiler with webpack and that did give us gains in terms of the time that it took for bundling right uh what we would still say is that if there is an existing project that is using webpack and at least uh, the slowness that we start seeing in webpack happens at scale as our project really goes and we have you know thousands of jsx files that is where the slowness starts to creep in in webpack that said webpack still is an ongoing uh, tool uh, there are very nice ideas that its developer shawn larkin i think is still there uh, they are adding and uh, uh, we will still be seeing a lot more of webpack it is not the death of webpack so uh, so that said what uh, we would recommend is if if it is a really a massive project that is already using webpack 
um and the first step that we would want if speed is a bottleneck is maybe we can uh, move from babel to swc and see if that gives us uh good gains right uh if it is a, a small enough project and you know uh, webpack is the one that we started off with then we would still want folks to be continuing with webpack um the idea being again that we don't want uh, to move from webpack just because of the other tools being there right uh vishal any anything to add before we move to the next uh good uh all all good i think we can yeah. cover it up okay then uh, for roll up uh, like you said we faced some hassles there uh we were just having uh, a question a while back in terms of roll up and other tools right one of the things that we also need to take care of is the future uh of the tooling uh, that is there right uh if you go to the github and look at the uh, the commits that are made uh yeah uh, so far sorry so far uh, roll up uh, one of the things that we want to see is the direction in which the the future of roll up is headed which seems very closely tied to wheat um, so yeah we would not recommend roll up directly to be used right now rather if you have an intention of trying an esl first bundle we would rather uh, want you to use wheat right uh similar for yes build it has a very opinionated way of development if speed is what you need right uh, speed above everything else right then uh, go for yes build uh, there's uh, there's no tool that comes close to yes build uh, at least right now in terms of speed of compilation um maybe some come we'll we'll come to that uh, just in a few slides but uh, if speed is of primary importance and really primary importance uh, then you know go with yes build otherwise uh, we would still recommend if you're starting off with a with a new project right and you have room for exploration we would uh, hard uh, we, we would strongly recommend we in terms of the speed the plugin and the defaults that it supports uh, we feel that uh, we brings in best of both worlds it is it has very good backing against it it has a very growing open source community and uh, uh, ha having even you at its helm itself gives it a lot of credibility considering the view uh, uh, package uh, uh, the the fame of view right and uh, finally swc uh, where uh, again we are looking at it as a transpiler so yeah uh, just take swc with a grain of salt and uh, um, we will come to the next steps that have happened for swc just in a while uh, okay now this is one slide that we wanted to cover very quickly uh both of these are actually taken from the jamstack survey of 2022 the state of js is 2021 so slightly older this is the one of the most recent surveys that has happened uh if you see we have highlighted wheat across both across both of the slides right the first one is by usage and satisfaction wheat is here at 6 and the next one that is at 1 is react now one thing to see here is this is not a analysis of just bundles right this goes across all parallels all kind of tooling that is there you will see docusaurus solid js hugo and next and in all of that the satisfaction of developers with wheat is the highest and orders of magnitude higher than the other tools that are there second one is this this is in terms of the change uh, or the uh, this is where people are picking up wheat right again uh, if you see this is across tools this is not specific to bundles still right you see react here and express and still wheat is heads and shoulders ahead of the other tools in terms of that a lot of new teams are picking it up right again this is just a survey you can go to the jamstack survey and it might be specific to a, a demography but this is the data that we found really interesting in terms of uh, usage of wheat and the impact that it has had on uh, the bundler ecosystem right okay uh, vishal anything to add before we move to the next slide No, all all good. I think we are already okay. uh, on time, so we can. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, finally, I think someone had asked about uh, Turbo Pack, right? Okay, so what is Turbo Pack? Uh, so Turbo Pack is uh, so the developer of uh, Web Pack, uh, Tobias Kaplas, moved to Next JS company, Vercel, last year, I think. Uh, what they wanted to do was to build the next successor of Web Pack, right? Uh, and uh, like we have covered earlier next year was also one of the initial adopters of swc right so what they said was okay we will pick up and we will start off with where we left for webpack we will uh, build a tool in rust we will have an esm first approach and uh, 
we will try and again learn from our mistakes uh, at at webpack and we'll start with swc and build it up so the in very initial stage of turbo pack was just swc and then they moved it up okay now why did we not cover turbo pack in our uh, talks one it, it is still in alpha uh, uh, that is one of the things uh, second is it is still experimental in next year itself uh, there's a flag that you can pass to enable it but um, uh, it won't come as the default uh, uh, default bundle for next year uh, third is the times when it would, when these uh, so the slide on the left is for next uh, js with turbo right so the time since uh, when this this uh, uh, graphic was revealed uh, then there has been a bit of debate around how these graphics were obtained and whether these these need to be revised uh, so the developers of beat themselves actually uh, replicated the entire code set that was there for turbo repo and they found that this is actually not the correct numbers right the reason i i bring it up was there was a question on the initial judgment on on turbo pack right uh, we can reserve our judgment for when it actually maybe moves to beta right now it is in alpha and still a lot of features are experimental and uh, uh, we cannot really go by the marketing numbers till we have actually used it right uh, so so in that regards it is not a tool that again we would recommend right now at all uh, but it's still something of a uh, like a very fertile landscape that is there uh, there is a room for a lot of uh, you know innovation uh, that we might be seeing here second thing is the image on the right which is rom right uh, i think it will be going in beta soon next year or it is already in beta uh, i'm not really sure on that part rom is the is a tooling like uh, like modern front end tooling tool right it it defines itself as uh, like a combination of linter and formatter and transpiler and bundler all in one it is written in rust uh, right now they have only two tools i think uh, but they are working on the rest uh uh so if you see for prettier it is incredibly fast again because of the advantages of rest but why we brought rome in our discussion was uh, what we had actually touched earlier right the idea of bundlers and transpilers and tooling in itself in web is evolving by a huge extent uh the bundler landscape itself has never evolved in silo there are, is react that had e initially had a lot of influence on webpack when it was coming out then the esx uh, standardization gave rise to esm first right so each of these has impacted the other now the way we are seeing with the domination of ssr first frameworks with the arrival of you know uh, as less as possible javascript back right uh, we will be seeing much and much more uh, impact of these frameworks on the kind of tooling that we might have let's say uh, as an open point we we folks can go and uh, Uh, uncover is we have not covered ssr for any of the uh, tools that we had covered right again because while we were uh, building our app we found that it was not a parameter that we wanted to evaluate our tools on but maybe in the near near future we might have to so yeah just keep an open mind around these tools and uh, do not use your tools while they are in alpha <laughs> uh, so yeah i think uh, that's it about the slides anything to add rishal and then we'll pick up the q and Yeah, that that's all. Any any open questions that we have for this? All clear or all clear? So this is really good. Okay, I will take that as a feedback. 